Good morning, good morning to all of you. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Come on in the room, come in the room. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in this day. Good morning to all of you. Come in the room. Come in the room. The Lord is great. He's greatly to be praised. He's greatly to be honored and adored. Good morning to all of you. Come in the room. That's right. It is time for us to give the Lord our first and our best praise. Time for us to magnify him for he is great. He is powerful. He is mighty. He continues to bless us and continues to do such great and powerful things. As a matter of fact, the Lord has done it again. He woke you up this morning. He allowed you, yes, to see this brand new day. Good morning to you, Sister Nicole. I'm going to go before the Lord in prayer, and then we're going to get right into what the Lord has for us on this morning. Good morning to you, Sister Terry. Father God, we just thank you. We bless you, oh God, for the people of God that are coming in the room to hear a word from you. We bless you, Lord God, because you are great and powerful, Lord God. And, and Lord God, we of ourselves and our finite minds, Lord God, we can't even fathom what it is that you're ready to do, what you're getting ready to do, God, in our lives, or how you're getting ready to bless us, Lord God. So, Lord God, we just come with open hearts and open minds, God, coming to hear hear from you, God, coming to see what it is that you have for us, oh Lord God, because we know, Lord God, that there's nothing that, oh God, that is too hard for you. So God, in our lives, as we come, Lord, and bringing our cares and bringing our problems to you, Lord God, we know that you can work it out. So thank you, Lord God, for working it out, God, even now. Lord, I decrease in myself and increase in you, the Lord Jesus Christ, who gives me the ability to do all things, not just do all things, Lord, but do all things well. So as we come this morning, we thank you, Lord God, that we are almost, Lord God, out of 2021. Yes, and all, all we're almost into the next year, the new year, 2022. Thank you, Lord God, for watching over us for these 364 days of last year, Lord God. And bring us into this new year, Lord God, that we will come into the newness of life, into a new place, a new standing in you, a new understanding of who you are, the ways you would have for us to do. But we thank you that this word, God, will go forth. This word, God, will touch the hearts and minds of men and women that hear it. Ah, Lord, yes, yes, we thank you for who you are at all times. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and bless the Lord. Amen. Good morning to all of you. Sister Sherry, Sister Nora, good morning to you. God bless all of you that are listening this morning. This morning I'm just really talking about what, what we were talking about on yesterday, having to do with transformation. Good morning to you, Sister Gwen. Good morning to you, Sister Donna. To all of you that I did not greet when I was yet in prayer, I want to give a good God bless you to you. Sister Rose Marie, so good to see you this morning. Good morning to all of you. Sister Terry, I think I greeted you, but good morning to you anyway. I just want you to know that I love all of you, um, all of you that have joined me, all of you that have been with me. Well, good morning to you, Brother Armando, for all of these years that we've been um, doing this meditation, that we've been doing the work that the Lord would have for us to do, that men and women, no matter where they are in the in, in the United States, outside in Africa, Bahamas, wherever they are, uh, wherever they are, they can hear a word from the Lord. And as I'm talking about transformation this morning, as I thought about it on yesterday, when I said the word, you know, transformation, um, I thought about being a transformer. Good morning to you, Sister Sherry. Sister Mary, good morning to you. So good to see you. Sister Mary again, good morning to you. As I thought about the word transformers on yesterday, I almost went there, but the Spirit of the Lord said, you hold on, wait a minute, because sometimes when we think about transforming, um, we think about, um, maybe many of you have, have watched that television show, you know, I have children, so I watched it, that television show, and it was about the transformers, and so sometimes we think of ourselves as those transformers. But what I talked about on yesterday was creating a culture of transformation. That is a culture where we perpetually know that we have to be transformed. And, and when I thought about those transformer toys or that show, on that show, those transformers, they would transform into something great, Sister Nimby. So they were, um, I'm going to use this as an example. They may have been a little taxi cab. They were, they were, they were um, vehicles and they may have been a little taxi cab. But then when you, when it was time for them to jump into action, if something happened, there was a villain that they had to fight. They would transform from that little taxi cab into this incredible, um, huge monstrosity of a vehicle that was able to fight, that was able to jump or able to fly. But whatever it was able to do was able to defeat the enemy that they were fighting. And as I think about us as transformers, we, the Lord has given us the power to be transformational, to change things, to be able to fight the enemy that is in our way, whatever is in our path. But the thing about us as humans, as disciples of God, as children, 
children of God, when we transform people of God, we're not like those ordinary transformers. We're not like those average transformers that were in the show. Y'all look it up. And then those transformers, once they got done fighting the, the villain, then they would go back to their regular business. They would go back to the taxi cab that they were. They would go back to the little Volkswagen Beetle that they were. Back, you know, they, they would go back to the place that they were, that inconspicuous person that they would not, nobody would know that they had the power. Nobody would understand that they were this, this great victorious being. But that's not what the Lord is asking us to do. That's not what he's expecting us to do. Because those transformers, at the time that they needed to transform, they would transform. But I'm reminded when the body Bible tells us to put on the whole body, the whole armor of God, he doesn't tell you to take it off. He wants you to put it on. He says so that you can fight, you know, withstand the fiery darts of the wicked one. He wants you to keep on that whole armor so that at any point in time, when the enemy comes your way, that you're able to withstand, you're able to fight. At any point in time, you know, when the, when the, when the enemy comes to speak lies to you, that and you're able to combat those lies with the truth. And so as I think about transformation, I think some of the things and the, maybe the reason why the spirit was speaking to me in regard to this transformational culture of transformation is that we are like those toy transformers. We are like that little show, that little cartoon in that we transform when we think it's the time. But then when we when it's convenient for us, we go back to the same way that we were. So Sadana, we, we, we yeah, when we when we think that you know, maybe the enemy is coming against us. Yeah, we'll call on God and maybe we'll look and read our word and, and maybe we'll call on our brother and sister to help us to pray, to intercede on our behalf. But then, Sister Gwen, Sister Donna, when it when when not, you know, when no one's looking, we still come on and hear somebody. We go back to the way that we were. You know, we we want to go back. <laughs> that butterfly. We're like that butterfly. We want to go back to the cocoon. But don't you know it's no turning back? Once you transform and once the Lord has transformed you to the creature that he's created you to be. There's no turning back. And we talked about this a little bit on yesterday, but I want to get a little bit deeper into that because I think we really don't understand that the Lord expects for us to have a culture of transformation, a culture where everything around us is different, that we don't have a place that we go. Let's, we know, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. We don't have a place. We don't have a cave that we can go back to the old place, the old me. We can say, okay, you know what? I can be this, this big super saint out here in the world, but, but I want to go back to my cave. I want to go back to my sin cave. I want to go back to my, my, uh, my old cave where I can just sit and I can relax and I can, you know, kick up my feet and, and, you know, pop over my Budweiser and I can just do those things and be myself. Come on, sometimes that's what we say. Sometimes it's annoying. That's what we say. I want to go somewhere and I want to be myself. But once you transform, that ought to be who the self is that God's created you to be. But if you, and if you don't, think that that's who you are, then maybe in your mind, you have not given it all over to God. If that's not who you really are, then well, you know, you go back to the message on yesterday, because then maybe you've not given yourself over to the Lord. Maybe you've not given him your body. You've not given him your spirit. You've not given your whole self over to him. And so that's why we're talking about this culture of transformation so that you know that there's no going back. There's no turning back. So when you transform, you are a transformed being of God. You are the man or the woman that God has called for you to be. And he doesn't expect you to go back to being that little Volkswagen Beetle or that little taxi cab or that little timid person. He doesn't expect you to go back to being the one who was being defeated on every hand. He doesn't expect you to be the one who's going back to being depressed and oppressed. He doesn't expect you to be the one that's going back to being fearful. He doesn't expect you to be the one that's going back that has uh, no self-control. He does being the one that's going back to being angry and being that hateful and unforgiving. That is not his expectation. When you are transformed into the mind of Christ to be the one that God has called for you to be, he's expecting you to keep on that spirit of humility. He's expecting you to keep on that spirit of peace and gentleness and love and kindness. He's expecting you to keep on that whole that whole armor. Let's not not the image, but that is who you are. It is sometimes it's an image, Sister Phyllis, that we try to hold up among people and, and don't don't you know that image doesn't work when you try to, oh my God, come on, I, I had to be a little transparent this morning. It's like, my God, I dye my hair. I, oh, y'all don't know. I have to be, I have to, I have to tell you this morning. I'm gray. My hair is gray. But don't you know, every time I went to the hairdresser last night, I like my hair. I went to the hairdresser last night. He said, you know what? That gray is coming out again. I said, how? How is that happening? 
He said, he said, it just shows that your hair is growing. I said, you know, so that is an image. I can't keep up. You know, after a while, y'all, y'all going, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to embrace the gray, right? But sometimes there's an image that we try to keep up and you can't keep it up. You just got to, you, you got to be who God has called for you to be. So if that, if God has called you and he's transformed you from the place that you were, listen, so he's transformed me. Listen, oh, thank you, Sister Gwen. He's transformed me, listen, from, from, uh, from brown to gray. Listen, I need to embrace that. Yeah, right, come on in here, somebody. If he's transformed you, he's transformed us. He said, if any man's in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. I can't, you can't go back. You can't go back. Yeah, I can dye my hair all day. But if I truly believe that I am the righteousness of God, I shouldn't want to go back to the old way. I shouldn't want to go back to a life of sin and death. I shouldn't want to go back to a life of drama. I shouldn't want to go back to that. My God. I'm talking about hair because I'm giving you an example. That's the trivial thing. But when we're talking about our life and we're talking about a place where we want to come on, go, and we want to be with the Lord forever, forever and ever, my God, you right, you right, Sister Nora. Who are you really? That Who has God created you to be? And if you really, truly want to be that person that God created you to be, I see you, Sister Dr. Evelyn, in the Caribbean. If you really want to be that person, then that's when you will really create a culture of transformation in your life. You got to hate the sin that you were in. You got to hate the place that you were in. You got to hate it so much that you're saying, I'm not going to go back. I am not going to go back to that place. And not only am I not going to go back to that place, but I'm going to be the example that the world needs so that men and women can come to God and come to him in such a way, my God, that they won't go back either. How about that? That they will not go back either because they understand who God is in their life. They understand. Listen, I got a word for you from Matthew chapter five. Matthew chapter five, verses 13 through 14. Yeah, I love the Lord. Does anybody love God in this place? Hey, glory to God. The Bible says, Matthew chapter 5, 13 through 14. <laughs> Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. We are the salt of the earth. Oh my God. Let's talk about that just for a few minutes. Because what I'm talking about, people of God, is creating a culture, a culture of transformation, a culture where we know that we can't go back to sin. Creating a culture where we believe that we are part of the kingdom of God and that nothing can turn us around. Nothing. But it says, listen, if, if we have lost the savor, that's what the Bible is saying. Then we are good for nothing but to be cast out, to be the, 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 except to be thrown out, one translation says, and be trampled under people's feet. Y'all, I don't want to be trampled under nobody's feet. What, what, if, if we can't, if we can't influence the earth as the people of God, we are in big trouble. We are in big trouble. So this morning, the spirit of the Lord sent me to tell you that you are the salt. You are the salt. You know what is interesting? When you go into the store and you can buy flour, you can buy sugar, you can buy some seasonings and some seasonings, I mean, you pay in. It depends what kind of seasoning it is, but you're paying five, six, seven, eight dollars for some seasoning. But you know, I would go buy some salt, box of salt, a big old box of salt. You know, it costs you maybe a dollar something, maybe two dollars. It doesn't cost very much, but it packs a powerful punch. You know, you mess around and put too much salt in something, 
<laughs> you put too much salt in something, it ruins the whole dish. You put too much of, of it. So what I'm saying is that it doesn't take a lot. It doesn't take a lot of salt to influence anything. And so why is it, people of God, that the world has not been influenced to know that God is King of Kings and that He is Lord of Lords? It doesn't take a lot. If you all made a recipe, I did. I made a, made something one day. I can't remember. Maybe some deviled eggs or something. Oh, I call them angel eggs. And I put, you know, you just grind up the yolks and put a little stuff in it. I put too much salt in it. Don't you know I ruined the whole batch? You know, I, you know, I couldn't have put too much because it's just a little bit of ingredients. But it was just too much. It was just too salty. Yeah, too salty. Yeah. And then for some things, it's just not salty enough. It's just, it's just. We are the salt of the earth, people of God. Yeah. What the Lord is just saying, yeah. He said, we, we got to be good for something. He's just saying to us, we have to be good for something. He said, if you, if you are salt, but you're not salty, you're good for nothing. You can, we, can be, we can walk around as those transformers, be in the little taxi cab. For those of you who came on late, you got to go back and listen. We can be the taxi cab, having the ability to transform into this great monstrosity of a, of a destroyer. But if we never do that, if we never use that power, we're good for nothing. All of us have the ability to be salty. All of us have the ability to influence. All of us have the ability to, to tell the world who God is. All of us has that ability. But we, yes, we have to know how to use the salt that we are. Yeah, are you all salt? We got to know how we got to use that salt. salt. Salt is a seasoning but it's also preservative. Yeah. Like what does it do? It seasons by add adds taste. It adds flavor. But then it preserves also by cleansing and, and making sure that things don't spoil. Yeah. But in, in, in any case, the salt has to touch what it's what it is trying to influence. It has to touch it in order for the power to be released. Yeah, it's, salt is no good. You can, you can have a whole bunch of salt in your kitchen. But if you never use it, you may as well throw it out. That's what the writer is saying here. You, you may as well throw it out. Yeah. The, what is the Lord saying? He said, listen, don't, don't just take your salt and just go to people like you know the word of God and, and, they're, and you're just going to beat them up with the word. Don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. But speak the word of truth and love to people that they will come to understand who the Lord is. We recognize that all of us are in the world, but the Bible says that we're in the world, but we're not of the world. Yeah, but we have to be the salt. We have to be the salt in the world. <laughs> we got to be the salt for the world because we got to understand that when you penetrate the world, yeah, you got you to gotta get in it. You got to get in the world to penetrate the world. But we got to be able to do that with the salt, to season, to flavor it. Glory to God. Yeah. Creating a culture of transformation within yourself, first of all. And then creating a, a culture of transformation around somebody else. What did Jesus say? If the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? He said, that I've given you the power to influence. I've given you the power to overtake I've, I've given it to you. Yo, you, you know, it's, it's like if you make some, if you make a cake, if you make bread, if you make something and you forget the salt, ah, uh, what, what you going to do? Yeah, maybe you can add it later, but you can't add it to the batter. You can't add it to the batter. Like he said, this is good for nothing. Just throw it out. Throw it out. The Lord is saying, don't become useless as a saint of God. Don't become useless as a child of God. He says, I've given you the power. Don't become useless, people of God. As we're creating this culture of transformation around us, he's saying, don't lose your influence. Don't lose your influence over your family. Yes, I know we've done some things in our homes behind closed doors, 
Yeah, we wonder why our children don't want to go to church. Yeah, I understand that. But listen, let's not lose our influence in our homes. There's some ways that we can go back. Yeah, how Yeah, how can it get its, its saltiness again? It can get its saltiness again, yes, by seeking the Lord in regard to how it is, Lord. How can I reconcile these relationships that I've destroyed, even in my family? Yeah, you can reconcile. You can do that. Don't lose your influence in the community. Don't lose your influence in the church. Yeah, we've all done some things. We've all done some things. But my God, ask the Lord, Lord, how can I reconcile this? How can I restore, Lord, what has been broken? Because the Lord says, if you don't restore that, he said, it's, no, it's no good for nothing. You are the salt. But if you have no influence, it's no good for nothing. Yeah, the Lord's, Lord, he, Lord needs us. He uses us that we might be able to reach other people for him on his behalf. We can't draw them to him, but we can show them who he is. We can show them how powerful he is. We can show him through the things that he's done through us, that we can speak a word. We can share our testimony. Yes, yes, because people are, are healed. They overcome. They overcome the enemy by the word of our testimony. And by the blood of the lamb. Yeah, we can't save anybody. But certainly we can show people what God has done and how powerful he is. But but people need to be able to listen to us. They need to be able to be influenced by us, to be able to hear from us. And when they can hear from us, my God, then they can know how good God is. We can't lose our influence, people of God. And if we have lost your influence, it's time for you to go back and ask God, Lord God, make me salty again. Hey, <laughs> make me salty again. Yeah, make me so that I can season the earth again. Not only season it, but also to preserve it, to keep it. Not That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the culture that you're creating around yourself so that I can keep it. You know, if you if you use a if you use a, a, a if the recipe calls for a teaspoon of salt and you use two teaspoons, that's too much. So we're not talking about here. The Lord's not talking about here, you know, putting, you know, giving your firstborn. Your, all, he's not talking about that. He's saying, all I want you to do is give some of your time, your talent, your, your resources. He said, into what it is I'm asking you to do so that men and women all over the place will know who I am. He said, you're a city that sits on a hill, a light that cannot be hidden. He said, once you have transformed into the person, the man or the woman of God that I've called for you to be. He said, don't go back. He said, he said you got to work. You got to be in the world. Hear me, people of God. You got to be in the world. He said, but don't transform back to the world. He said, once you're transformed into the image, the man, the woman of God that I've called for you to be. Don't transform back. Don't go back to the old place. Because just because you got to go back to talk to your old friends, don't then go back to the way that the old friends were. I hope you all understand what I'm saying. Because many times we do that. And instead of us being the remaining the person that God has called for us to be, we then go back, my God, to be the person that our friends expected us to be so, and, and, and in an effort that we think that they will receive us. But what the Lord is saying, they will receive you as a transformed man or woman of God that you are because it isn't you that's coming to them. You're coming to them in the power of God. And when you come in the power of God, that's what's going to be transforming. When you come in the power of God, that's when the anointing is going to come and break yokes. When you come in the power of God, that's what's going to release strongholds. So that's what you got to recognize. When you come, my God, and you have this culture of transformation around you, yokes will be broken. Come on, shackles will be removed. People will be set free. When you come, my God, yes. When you come knowing that God is going to heal, that God is going to release some things out of your life, that curses will be broken off of you. But you got to know, my God, that you, yes, once you transform, once you are the man that God's called you to be, once you are the woman that God has called for you to be, there's no turning back. There's no transforming back to the world because God said to you, you've got to create around you a culture of transformation. That everything about you is about winning. Everything about you, my God, is about defeating the enemies in your life. Everything is about you is about taking control of what God has given to you. Everything about you is about possessing the land. Everything is about you is about walking into 2022 with more power than you had before. And recognize that the power that God has given to you is a power that is available to to you to use. You are the salt of the earth. Use that salt. 
to season the earth. Use that salt, yes, to provide power to men and women. Use that salt to preserve what it is that God has said. Don't be useless. Yeah, don't be useless. Be productive in the body of Christ that God will give you everything that you need, not just for today, but for times to come. Because the Lord wants to bless you. He wants to heal you. And certainly he wants to set you free. Father God, we just bless your name. We praise you, Lord God, for who you are. And we thank you, Lord God, for giving us this word to remind us, Lord God, that we are the salt of the earth. But not only that, to remind us, Lord God, that we've got to stop this yo-yo thing. We've got to stop going back and forth, oh God. Let us know, Lord God, that you're reminding us that once we transform into the creature that you call for us to be, once we've transformed into the new man, oh God, it is you, Lord God, that will sustain us. Us. It is you, oh God, that will keep us from going back to the old man. It is you, God, that will help us to understand that just like the butterfly, God, he cannot turn into a caterpillar anymore. And Lord God, I thank you for that, for uh, how allowing us to be the salt of the earth, for helping us to understand this great responsibility that we have, that you have given to us. And because you've given us a great responsibility, oh God, you expect us to complete the mission. You expect us, God, to do what you've called for us to do. Lord God, yes, now, oh God, that we would walk out this time on our lives, oh God. Thank you for the purpose. Thank you, Lord God, for the plan that you have for us, oh God, that we will continue, God, to be the men and women of God that you call, God, for us for this time of this season. Yeah, yes, we may feel the pressure, oh God. Even though we feel the pressure, God, to do what you call for us to do, we know, God, that when we go, we're going with power and we're going, my God, yes, with the resources that we need. We're going with everything we need, God. Yo, we, yes, maybe we have felt inadequate. Quit, oh God, to do what you've called for us to do. But I thank you, Lord God, that you've given us, God, everything that we need, my God, to go out and complete the task, God, under pressure, to complete the task, afraid, to complete the task, Lord God. Yes, give us the courage that we need, oh Lord God, that we don't have to stand on the outside. But Lord God, we can open the door and we can walk in, Lord God, and do everything, God, that, you call, that you've commanded us to do, that we can be the salt, not only in private, but we can be the salt in in public. We can be the salt at the basketball game. We can be the salt on our job. We can be the salt in our home. We can certainly be the salt in our churches and in our congregations. My God, that our churches will be built up in the things of God. We thank you, Lord God. Yes, that even that we may be like the little bitty pack of the salt. Lord God, we will season the earth and we will, God, make it good, my God, for you to draw men unto yourself, that men and women will not be lost, but that they will be saved and saved forevermore. We bless your name in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and bless God. We thank God. Yes, he is good. God is good. Yes. Yes, I thank you, Brother Johnny. He's good. He's faithful and he's always there for us. Listen, people of God. Yes, I pray that you will share this word with somebody because we need to stop going back and forth. And if you truly, truly want to be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, he has an expectation of us. And that expectation is we continue to oppose the things that God opposes and that we love the thing that God loves. And when we do that, my, don't you know that he will bless you abundantly? You'll be able to live that abundant life that the Lord has already always talked about. Let us accept the Lord as our personal Savior and walk in the things, walk in the abundance, walk in the manifestations of his power and his grace that he's given to us. And we don't have to worry about the things that are happening in the world because we are the ones, my God, that are seizing the earth. We are the ones that are influencing what's happening in the world. You think you're talking about all the negative things that are happening and, and then we're falling right lockstep into line with the world. No, God expects you to season the earth. He expects you to influence the earth, that the world will walk lockstep into what's happening behind the children of God, behind the kingdom of God. What does that mean? That means we got to get in place, people of God. We have to get in positions, people of God, positions in high places, positions in local government. We got to get in positions. Oh, I got this is a different, whole different message. We got to get in positions, listen, on boards. We've got to get in positions of decision making. Listen, we are the salt of the earth. We've got to get in positions in county government. We got to get in positions, my God. Yes, in the in, in high government in, in Washington, D.C., people of God, you've got to get in positions. I'm I'm talking about those who know God and who are able, oh, glory to God, I got to get out of here, and who are able, my God, to make a difference because you are the salt. You're the salt of the earth. I love you so much with the love of Jesus. You have a wonderful day. You go in peace. <laughs>